let's talk a little bit about functors. Now these are going to be uh, maps between categories. Um, so recall, uh, let's, let's define them here. Uh, let A and B be categories. Um, a functor, uh, we'll call it big F. This is going to go from A to B. Consists of. Now, this is going to be a function um, taking objects of A to objects of B. So we're going to have an object in A. It's going to get mapped to F of A, some object of B. Okay. This lives in here. This is going to live in here. Um, another thing we have. Uh, so for all uh, objects, we're, we're going to write it like that. Um, we're going to have another function, and it's going to go. Let's see, and let's write it down here. So from the home set of a, a prime, it's going to go to the home set of f of a f of a prime so these are morphisms in a these are morphism morphisms in b so a functor is going to map objects to objects and maps to maps um, another thing we have let's and and so it's i mean it's going to take a map and it's Going to place it at f of wherever that map goes to. Uh, composition works nicely as well. Um, if we have f prime composed with f, um, assuming this makes sense, well, that's just going to be uh, f of little f prime uh, composed. So composition works well nice with, with, with functors. Uh, and one last thing, it's going to take um, the identity on A, and it's going to take it to the identity of F of A. And this is... Got a lot of A's. Okay. So what we really have is, let, let's have our category A right here. Let's say we have a nice little uh, picture. Um, let, let's call this A, B, C. Um, uh, here we go. Um, let's call this morphism F. G, uh, this is just going to be G composed with F. So what is our functor F going to do? Well, it's kind of going to map it over here to B, and we're going to get a nice, nice little picture in B. Uh, we have F of A, uh, F of uh, F of B, F of C. So everything works really nice. So this is our, our diagram in A, and it's just going to map it to another little picture in B. So functors preserve uh, domains, codomains, isomorphisms, uh, composition, identity arrows. So, um, last time we talked about uh, groups being categories with uh, one object. So let's look at an example of um, a functor between 
uh, groups consider those categories. Okay. Um, example. Let G and H be groups considered as one object categories. Now, uh, a functor, uh, let's call it uh, big F, going from G to H, takes uh, the unique object in G, uh, let's just call it this G, it's going to take uh, this unique object to this unique object. Let's just call it H. So it's going to take G to H. Uh, there's no other choice because those are the only objects of these categories. So for uh, morphisms, um, let's call them G1, G2. Um, Let's see, in, in here, now there's only, there's only one object. So for, for morphisms in, in that category, remember these are, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write here, elements of our group, think of it like that. So we have... Well, by definition, what is what is our functor going to do? Um, it's going to it's going to uh, let's see, g g one composed of g two um, is equal to um, also uh, it's going to take our uh, identity element, which we we have to have, and um, this is the identity in um, in G, and it's going to take it to the identity in H. What is this? Well, this is a group homomorphism, so what we have is that um, a functor is just a generalized group homomorphism in this scenario. That's all it is. Group homomorphism. Um, so what if we had uh, a functor instead of instead of our functor going from two between two uh, groups? What if we had it going to um, a different category? So what if we took a group considered as a uh, as a one object category? Um, let's see here. So what if we had a functor going from uh, some group? to the category of sets. Now, the category of sets, the objects are sets, and the morphisms are just regular uh, functions that we're, that we're used to. Now, the, the isomorphisms in this category are just the bijections. So, it's a little bit different. Um, so, once again, there's a unique object in our group, our category considered as a one as a one group or one object category, and it's going to get mapped to um, some set S. Um, so what we have, let's let's have a little let's draw a little picture. This is our our uh, one object category with with. Um, we call G the, the object. Um, we have our identity. Uh, let's let's say G G sub one, uh, G sub two. Now, what is F going to do? So this is in in G. So in the category of sets, um, well, remember functors preserve domain and codomain. So these maps are going to get mapped to maps whose domain and codomain is this one set S. So uh, let's let's call this. Um, let's see. 
let's call this Thesa B, um, Thesa G sub 1, and Thesa G sub 2. So this map gets mapped to here like this. Okay? Uh, and so you remember that each of these maps are isomorphisms because we're working in a group. Um, functors preserve isomorphisms. So that means that every one of these maps in this category is an isomorphism. But all, all that means is that these are just bijections or uh, automorphisms or, or permutations, whatever you want to call them, of this set S. So <clears throat> what we really have, uh, let's say uh, for little s in our set, um, let's write, let's, let's, let's use this notation. So what we have is we're going to take an element of S. So our functor is going to map one of these morphisms over here, and we're going to evaluate it at S. So we're just going to use this notation. We're going to write this as g dot S. It, it, it doesn't really mean, this notation doesn't mean anything. We're just going to write it like that. Um, so F is a functor. F a functor, this implies that, well, by definition, um, we have this. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna write it like this just so it's a little simpler. Uh, what does this say um, in that notation? G sub one, G sub two, dot s equals G sub one, two. Uh, and also, don't forget the, the identity. Now this is for uh, for all. G sub 1, G sub 2 in our uh, category. Let's, uh, or in our, in our we'll, we'll just call it in our group. Okay? Now, this should look really familiar to you. Um, what is this? This is something we all know and love. This is just a, um, it's just a left action by G. What, this is just a left G set. A functor between a group and a set, it's just a it's just a left G set. It's it's a complete it's a complete generalization generalization of it. Um, so next time I want to talk about uh, maps between functors. So maps between maps, we're going to call these uh, natural transformations. Uh, we're going to come up with a few good examples that are really simple, just involving groups, uh, sets. Uh, so I'll see you all next time.